Mark, good to see you again. Um, can we start heading into Rotherham? Do you have any fresh injury concerns heading into this weekend? No, not really, to be honest. Everybody's uh, come back in good shape and we gave them, a, a, obviously, a good recovery day and they've recovered well, so we're ready to go. Are you able to welcome anyone else back into the fold as well? No, not really. You know, it's the same group we've been working with. Um, we're always supplementing in the young players, so there was another couple of young faces who arrived in at the training this weekend. They did extremely well. Um, but I keep saying it's all testament to the academy. They're doing some great work here at the club, you know, some great coaches in there. Looking back on the whole result, obviously first home game for you and, and a win under the belt. Just how have you reflected on that this week? Just go again. You know, you've got to just uh, park that now and go on to the next thing. Um, that's the way we work here. That's what we're focus is now as well. Enough, you know, we know they're a good team and we'll respect them. Do you feel though on that whole result, it's a real platform for you to continue that trend? Uh, well, yeah, just focus on the training day by day. You know what I could influence in the building, uh, how I could improve the squad and the team, and uh, keep working and being relentless in everything we do. And then obviously you see the the results come with the hard work that we put in. I guess in a way you get that win under the belt, but still there's a lot to learn. What what do you take from that game? What did you learn from that game? Yeah, we just know that it reiterates how important it is to get yourself front in this league. And uh, we showed good resilience there to, to obviously see the game out. And um, as I said, um, we just keep working and training on these type of critical aspects of the game. Um, how to handle them much better and sometimes you've got to suffer in the game but we showed we could do that as well and I felt in the second half we were much more slicker in ball possession and that was a big uh, improvement on the first um, because I wasn't really satisfied with that and I know that we had so much more to give in that respect. I guess for you as a head coach and, and we kind of know what you're about Mark speaking to you over these first couple of weeks how much satisfaction does it see that that result and that performance did come after, like you say, the the Reading game and, and the draw that followed that as well? Look, for me, I just, you, you're getting to know me now, you know, I'm here to win games. Um, obviously, in the respect to the fans and stuff, it's so important for them that they get something to go home and be happy about. And that's why I'm here, I'm all in, I'm going to do this when my family come down here to Yorkshire and give it everything I've got so that they've got a team that they're really proud of. And a team, no matter what happens in the game, that they'll roll their uh, sleeves up and, and get really stuck in and be aggressive. In terms of, we talked the, the whole game, but your first few weeks here, what, what have you learned in general, not just about this challenge, but also about yourself, Mark? Yeah, well, listen, you're always learning. It doesn't matter what age you are, you know, you're always learning and I'm always looking to develop and improve and... I think that's the secret about football. It doesn't matter what age you are, you know, you could always improve. Um, what I have learned, though, is that there's fantastic people here in the building. Everybody's so supportive and they, they, they all are working towards the one target and that's, that's for us to be successful on the pitch. But what I would say as well is that it's not just the people at the training ground, it's also the staff up at the stadium. I've been up there um, a couple of times since I've been down. And they're so supportive and friendly and you just get the feeling like it's a big family here, you know, and that makes it an absolute joy for me to work for these guys and to, to give them everything I've got so that we're winning games. You seem the kind of guy that you like to really integrate yourself into the town, into the community. As You use the word family a lot, both your own and the Huddersfield town family. Why is that so important to you, Mark? It's just the way I've been brought up, you know. I got brought up in a big family and it's important that you look after each other and that's what we're doing here at the club. We're all pushing in one direction and it's not always like that at uh, clubs, you know. Um, but this has really got a special feel about it and I'm sure that we'll, we'll continue to do well and we'll start to really win games and climb this table. Following the win over Hull at the weekend, uh, part of your post-match went a little bit viral talking about effort and application and if, if you want to coast then you're not going to be part of the team. Have you seen any improvement in reaction from maybe certain members of the squad following that? See, to be honest, I don't really know about stuff like that. I never really take uh, much attention to these things. I really only focus on uh, what I do in the training, you know, um, and I just want to make it clear that I demand standards every day in the training and everything's got to be done with a purpose and with intensity, you know. 
Um, so for me, there's been a really good aggressive training week and the lads have come back and well recovered, but they've also, you can see there's players in that squad that are trying to catch your eye in regards to this game at the weekend. I guess for you as a head coach, the more players trying to do that, it gives you a bit of a selection headache. That's only a good thing. Yeah, it's a very good thing, you know, and that's a credit to Lee Bromby and his staff here because they've brought in a really exciting uh, squad, you know, with a good mixture of young and older players um, and they're working ever so hard, you know, so we've got to just keep this level of work up and keep focus and discipline and we're training and everything we do and uh, we're really looking forward to the weekend now. And looking forward to the weekend, it's a, another chance for you to experience another Yorkshire derby already. Yeah, that's the great thing about here. I went to watch uh, Wigan against Blackburn there during the week as well, which was a good game. Um, and for me, it's great that you're in this area that you could travel, watch big games live, out with your own calendar and your own schedule. Um, so we know that it's a real test in this league and a real challenge every week, but... The guys are showing me they're up for that challenge and they're very competitive at the moment, which is uh, pleasing for me. You know, that's the type of environment we're trying to create here. Rotherham United as well, they've gone through a similar change, you know, appointed a young and upcoming coach in, in Matt Taylor. Do, do you see similarities with, with yourself and Matt? Yeah, just like, obviously, I mean, you could see there's been a lot of changes of late. It gets to that kind of time of the year. Um, and as I said, we always respect the opponent, opponent um, and we just going to focus on what we could do on Saturday and we've been working hard this week. And we've mentioned the away form and albeit a lot of it before you came into the club, Mark, obviously that point at Luton last time you were on the road. Do you see this as a real chance just to get that win on the road ticked off? Yeah, listen, when we click into gear, we're going to give teams big problems, you know, there's no doubt about that. So it's just about that going in with the right mindset and we're going to go there on the front foot and we're going to be in a situation where we could go and put as many offensive players on that pitch as possible to create problems for the opposition and that's what we, that's, that's how we are as a club now. That's everything we're about, you know. Good luck, Brett. Great, thank you very much. Absolutely. We'll just thank you, Lee. Lend the microphone to Steve and come to Stephen. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Um, are you... Do you feel like the defensive unit that you've got now is something you can stick with and try and build on now? Yeah, Steve, the, there's many good defenders in the, in the club, you know. It's just about getting the balance right. Um, we're lucky that we've got experience there with Herrick and Tom Lees and, and obviously Yuta comes in and gives balance with his left foot, which is great. And he's getting more aggressive in training every day and he's starting to uh, be really strong in the duels. Um, so he's he's working away. Uh, fine, um, but we've also got good young ones as well that could come in uh, to the fold if they're needed and they're training the way really good in the background as well but we've just got to keep that work up guys, you know, it's important that it's not only the starters that are working hard, it's the, the guys that are not involved, they've got to put themselves in the best possible condition so that when they come into the team, they're ready to stay in the team, you know, and, and that's the way that I, I work and that's the standards that I set do you feel like a bit of consistency might help with the defensive record, though? Obviously, you've had sort of a clean sheet now, um, but the defensive record previously has not been great. Do you think a bit of consistency might help? Yeah, like you said, it's just about getting that uh, constant, you know, and the consistency all the time. Um, and that's what this league's all about. You know, teams, so many of the teams are competitive that they can go and uh, scrape wins. So we've just got to be solid and, and play from that really strong platform that were created there at the weekend. I think I've seen from sort of Jordan and Danny, their work up front, the link up is starting to come together. They're playing in the wingers behind, maybe not getting enough of the ball in the box though. Is that something you've been working on? Listen, we're working on many things, you know, like it was so important for me is when you look at their movements, you know, you guys have obviously noticed it as well. They're very dangerous and they're making great runs in the box. So, they, they two are going to be a handful for any, anyone in this league. Um, and they're both foxes in the box, as you, you could see the confidence Woji's playing with. And Wardy also, especially with the, the individual class that he showed for that chip to the back post there for Helic was just, that's top level, you know. And that's what Wardy's capable of like producing on a daily basis and in the matches as well. So I'm really excited to continue helping them to develop their partnership. Do you feel like um, 
the three five two as well is something that you want to stick with going forward, or are you going to be looking sort of game by game at what the best? Yeah, just game by game, Steve. You know, like I think you'll not you you'll probably notice from us that like, I never ever talk about systems and all that. I'm not interested in it, guys. I, I just talk about like uh, distances between players and movements and and being compact. And I'm, I'm not finally talking about systems and stuff like that. You know, I just want to have clarity in what we do and uh, doing the basics and the fundamentals, right? And that's what I believe in. That's what I've learned um, as a young coach from these old school managers. And I'm really st- going to keep sticking to it, guys. You know, I'm not interested too much in talking about systems and all that. I just focus on the basics and getting the good principles in for the team and the moves that I like us to, to produce on a match day. And we work relentless at it in training. Do you feel like you're getting that now, that those basics nailed down game by game? That's the funny thing about being head coach, Steve. You're probably like, you get, I, I would say, how, how could I say this? My wife says you're, you're OCD about everything, you know, but you've got to understand that football, you can't be like that. You can't get it perfect. There's a flip side to football that, like Wardy's goal at the weekend, he just goes and produces a moment at individual class. Um, so you've got to give the guys that freedom to express their sound the last third as well. But what we're creating there is a really good structure to play for from, and you can see that we have real clarity in everything we're doing now. And we all know that there's a lot of room for improvement because we've only been a short period together. What does training look like for you? What sort of sessions do you prefer? Do you do much video work? What what's how does it look? Just, just a mix of everything, you know, but obviously I don't want to give too much secrets out, Steve, you know, because that's that's our work, that's um pretty much our focus. But you'll hear us talk a lot about the training because it's massive for us. Uh, um the guys will tell you the staff I sit after training and watch the training twice again. Um and it's the way I've been educated as a as a head coach, you know, like I'm not too focused on what the other guys are doing. I'm always focused about what we're doing as a group and uh, what we're implementing in the training and if there's things that I could tweak and how I could get into the heads of these players to make it better, you know? And we're building it and learning it as we go at the moment and it's really uh, interesting to see how well they're adapting. Louis sort of touched on it, but the the players that you dropped at the weekend, have you seen... a uh... A better response from them um, after after the weekend. Steve, see, it's it's not a case of me dropping players. What it is is that I've got a really good squad here, and I just want uh, everyone to know, in respect to the players, that you have to be competitive every single day in the training. And as soon as you drop off that level, there could be a chance that you're not involved. And you know what it's like, Steve. The players they want to be involved so much. Everything they do is about getting that shirt on and showing the fans what they could do on a Saturday. When they've not got that, it's no nice feeling. I've been in that situation myself as a player, um, and I hated it. That's probably why I had so many clubs and people talked about as being a journeyman, but it was more to do as when I was a guy that wasn't playing games, I almost felt I'm here to play football and getting paid to play football. They're paying me to do something that I'm not actually doing, you know? Um, so I just want to create this kind of culture here that everyone knows that they could be involved, but they have to come with that winner mentality and they have to show me that they've got the fire in the stomach every day and that burning desire to go and do well because we're here to win. We're not here just to, to play for the sake of it. We're here to win games, guys. And it's got to be like that every day. So it's not a case that those players are out of your question now. They can come back into the fold. They could easily come back in, you know. Um, and that's that's the way it's going to be. Fantastic. That's all from me. Cheers, Steve. Thank you very much. We'll come to Leon from the Yorkshire Post in the top left corner. Morning, Leon. Head it up. Morning, Mark. Are you okay? Good morning, Leon. How are you? I'm not too bad, not too bad. I, I just sort of think he had a great result on on Sunday and obviously a clear week with the players getting your messages across. But I suppose you want to see it from the players themselves. They've got to work it out and drive each other on as well. As much as you're instructing them, they've you've got to see it from within the players as well, haven't they? They've got to look after yeah. themselves as well. Yeah, absolutely. And they're doing that, to be fair. You know, they're managing situations and 
Um, there was one good thing from the weekend. Although we were up in the game, there was actually a bit of like uh, heated exchanges in regards to two or three players with yeah. each other coming into the dressing room. And I really admired them for that because that's the type of environment I want is where you could fall out with each other, but it's all for the target and that's to be successful. Um, and yeah. we, we know that, I keep saying to them, we're like a family, you could have your fallouts, but we put it to bed the next day and we just move on because we know in this league there's so many games and a big volume of games coming and we know yeah. that we've got to park these things because we've got to focus on the training. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're really showing me a great uh, commitment to the training at the moment. So yeah. we've got to keep improving in that respect. Because that anger, it can show that people care, doesn't it, ultimately? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they just show that they've got... Uh, a real willingness to do well. Um, and yeah. I always talk about that. They just, they're just they playing with the fire in the belly at the moment. You know, they're really yeah. Um And you could see it in their eyes that they're burning to get out there and to play in front of our people to show them what we're about and that we're here to win. Yeah. It looked on Sunday you had sort of teams within teams. You had the two lads up front who did the job together, the two centre-halves, the two lads on the left. Is that something you're big on that, you know, little teams in teams sort of? Yeah, we're, we're massive on that. Way. So every day in the training, we're always building yeah. relationships and like making sure that we've got our boxing partners and stuff like that so that it's competitive, you know, um, and that's the way the training's designed. Um, but the guys are, they're doing ever so well in that respect is that they're, they're being aggressive in everything they do, yeah. not only without the ball, but also in possession. They're aggressive in their passing movements and stuff. And I wasn't satisfied with that in the first half. I thought we could have been a lot slicker and smoother in, uh, in ball possession, but it's yeah. it's going to come. We've only been a week together now, you know. Yeah, it, it seems to be st starting games, looking at the statistics, is a big thing for Huddersfield this season. I think away from home, the, the bottom in the, the half-time table, but they're the quite quite good and strong in the in the second half of games. It's just about getting that solid platform and staying concentrated, isn't it? And yeah, you know. Absolutely. Concentration massive. And uh building on from the solid platform we've got and also giving uh the guys a feeling that they're very flexible and could play yeah. many different systems and stuff, you know. Um and then they're showing me that they could adapt and that's pleasing as a head coach, you know. Yeah, I mean, getting that sort of, even getting to half time, getting that that clean sheet, that'll be, that's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, conceding too many goals sort of early on in games on the road. It's not the way I think, to be honest. You know, you could see with the way I've got a lot of offensive players on the pitch. I go out there, I want to score goals. I want to uh, give this uh, stadium at home games and the way our fans are really proud feeling that their team just go for it and they, yeah, they, they yeah. don't hold back and they really. Um, basically, like I always say, they just let the hand break off and they go for it, and they want to attack and score as many goals as they can. Um, yeah. And as as you've seen, we've scored. I think since they've been in, it's maybe is it six goals. Yeah. Six yeah. goals there. Six goals in three games. So we know on any day we could, and probably if it was like Steve talk, touched on earlier with the final pass or the movement, you know, we could have scored many more. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we've got to keep improving on that. And of course, the security behind the ball and all that, that's what me and my staff are working on in the training. We've just been relentless with them in that respect, you know. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you finally, Huddersfield, have, they've got a group of, of core leaders, group leaders. It's something that you don't really see at, you know, that many clubs with a, a little core of senior players sort of, you know, running everything, if you like. Um, are, you, are you big on that? Is that something that you, you sort of encourage and like? Yeah, I've always done that. All the clubs have been it. So, like, uh, at Hertha Berlin, Prince Boatown was like, was like, a, was like a little brother to me, you know? Yeah. We basically done it, me and him done it together. So, like, yeah. guys like Hoggy, Lazy, Helic, Wardy, Rhodes. Yeah. So big, uh, our big uh, keeper, uh, what a presence he's got. I mean, what a fantastic boy he is. Yeah, big Nichols. He's just got an incredible presence about him. You know, every yeah. time he comes in the building, he's ready to train. He's vocal. He's impressed me so much. Um, yeah. And they, they guys are massive because they they go and manage and control the group. And I forgot yeah. to say, although he's a little guy, Holmes, he's a big character as well in the dressing room. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but they're important for us, you know, because they drive the message every day. Yeah. And they've been doing that. And I think with Sorba, although Sorba is a young guy, he's yeah. also stepping up um, and he's taking big responsibility in that area as well. And he's starting yeah. to be one of the pushers, the guy he's pushing people in a positive way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's impressive to see he's developing as a person, not only as a footballer, you know. Yeah, it's sort of lads will probably finish training, maybe go for a coffee, talk about tactics, that sort of thing. And it's it's obviously been big in German football from what, what you've been used to. Yeah. Listen, it's great, you know, you could see them discussing things and obviously you could see with their body language there's a lot of stress and strain on them after the sessions. Um, yeah. But that's what I'm looking to do. Um, if they could cope with it day in, day out in the training, when it comes into match day, they're going to handle it, no problem. Yeah. Best of luck on Saturday, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Lee. Thanks, Thank Leon. You. Cheers. We'll uh, just check. Uh, calendar, any questions? Are you okay? Yeah, that's a cool. And uh, Dave and the uh, Union Huddersfield guys, are you okay? Have you got anything you want to add? Hello. Hello, Mark. Thanks Thanks for your time. Hey, guys. I didn't see you there. It was like <laughs> the picture wasn't there quite. But I've got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a question for me, first of all. Um, just thinking about you as, as a player. Yeah. and become becoming a manager what have you picked up from from coaches around europe and 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 now having seen you've seen games in the championship now what is it that's 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 new for you you're bringing as 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 a manager now that maybe as a player was missing yeah lads i'll not speak about me as a player so it's no question i want to answer because it's unfinished business for me you know I was a young guy that went in the Celtics first team at 16 under Kenny Daglish. So, really, a player that could do that at that age should have been playing for the big clubs in Europe. But what I've had the chance to do is, is go and be successful as a coach now. And I'm relentless in everything I do. I want to drive standards because I know the, the experiences that I've had could help these younger players and older players because I've been in so many different situations. And probably the skill set that I've developed throughout that phase of my career is now helping us as a head coach and has helped me as an assistant coach as well to the big names in world football, you know. And do you feel more that maybe managers that you were, you were playing under made mistakes in terms of looking after players? And you, you we saw on Sunday that you came out at half time and were talking to the to the subs as, as they're warming up. Is it a, a squad thing for the day and making sure that they're all in the moment? Yeah, like obviously you learn good and bad from people you played under, you know, it's normal. But I'm not here to crash anybody or that because, it, you know, people are trying to do their best and, and it's not an easy, like I always say, you've got to be crazy to do this job. You have to be a little bit crazy, you know, you really do. Um, because uh, it's, you we, we know how uh, fast this football world moves, but I just love it. I love it so much. I love being on that pitch every day with my guys, watching them improve, building relationships with them. And I think what you've all noticed about me is it's all about the people. So I've got to be in amongst the people and get a feel for them. And that's why I come out at half time because I like to look at my subs in that warm up to see if they really shown me their dynamic and they're ready to come on because ultimately they've got to come on that pitch and be better than what I've got on the pitch. And they've got to come on and be in a situation where they could either close a game out or they could go and win us the game. So it's a massive thing for me. And I'm big on watching people's behaviours and stuff like that. I've always been like that as a player as well. I was never scared of the confrontation with the so-called big names. And I think that's probably why Glenn made us a captain at Norwich at a young age as well, at 20, I think 22 or 23. Um, because it was just all about winning for me. I just wanted to win so bad. And uh, and and that's the way I could see our young players now. They're really getting that winner mentality, and it's pleasing for me to see. Um, yeah, of course, Martin is one of us. Yeah, you, you've mentioned young players. I want to touch on one of them that had a good game on Sunday was Etienne Kamara. Yeah. How, how do you think it is important for the young players to have these sort of performances where they're dominant in the field? Yeah, he's listen. He's a good player. He, he's got. I said after the game, he's like a lion out there on the pitch, you know, for a young boy, he's physically very strong. 
But what I would say is that we've got to be careful with him because um, he's got a lot to learn and there's a long way to go for him. But uh, how could I explain that to you? He's just a fantastic boy. He's not only a good footballer, he's a fantastic boy. And he always comes in every day with a smile on his face and he, he looks like he just is desperate to get out there on the training pitch. So for a coaching staff and as a, and as a staff at the club, we're so lucky to have people like that in the building. And it's not only Etienne, there's a lot more like that in the building as well, but it's just trying to develop them so that the, in the right moment they could come in and give a good account of their self. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate your time. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.